Hello guys, welcome to a, probably um, quite a short um, November 2022 full moon reading because there's not really all that much to say but what is important, while well, it is quick to establish this, <laughs> it's obviously important to say. Now, the full moon is in um, the sign of Taurus on November the 8th. And what is interesting about this is that it comes in at 16 degrees. Now, astrology and numerology is very much related. And 16, 1 and 6 is 7. 7 is the highest number of protection. So that's one thing, because this full moon coincides um, with, the, uh, with a lunar eclipse. Now, on October 25th, we had a solar eclipse. And a lot of people felt angry felt totally out of tune, out of sync. But that has to do, or had to do, with the fact that the the solar energy, um, or, the, or the sun, for want of a better word, is closely related and associated to the ego. So it is about, you know, the drive, and when, when things then get stalled, um, and you're not feeling feeling well. It brings out a sort of the rebellious side to you. So there was more anger in the air um, at the um, October 25th new moon um, than there is at the solar eclipse. Uh, sorry, the lunar eclipse that November the 8th has. Now, <clears throat> eclipses basically happen because the sun and the moon, the way they travel, uh, there is um, intersection points that can be measured. And when they reach them, they move into each other's shadow, if that makes sense. And obviously, when the moon is in the shadow of the sun, um, you know, um, that can cause all sorts of issues. In, in any case, this is a full moon. The full moon is obviously fully associated, so therefore there's quite a bit of information to be had, because nothing is as hidden as during a new moon, Right? Um, and the full moon obviously has the opposite effect of, of, of that, if that makes sense. So um, whatever it is you need to figure out, you will figure out because it is the, uh, the new moon. Uh, sorry, the full moon. What all about the, the new moon? The full moon, rather. So that is really important just to remember this, that because the, the moon is fully illuminated, this is a good time to figure out what is actually going on. The reason why eclipses... Um, can be difficult is because it is a lunar eclipse. The lunar is obviously the moon, and the moon affects our emotions really, really massively. And when there is an eclipse, it feels, energetically speaking, as if you're not getting out of your... Um, you know when you have these morning... When you wake up in the morning and you need, you, you need two or three coffees just to get going, and... You have one of those days where you just find, oh gosh, didn't do anything for me. That is sort of the energy that the um, the lunar eclipse has. So this will very likely for all of us be a slowish day, be a day where things are not quite working so much. But here is what can be done about this. That makes sense. So number one, it's not all bad because the full moon on the eighth. It's just an energy that lasts a couple of days, as we all know, and it has a lunar eclipse. Right? You just have to get through this feeling of everything is shit and can I trust what I'm feeling. Right? The reason why you're maybe a bit easily upset is because the moon is on the way to Mars. And Mars is an energy... Um, and we actually reached this two days after... Uh, um, the, the full moon. Um, it's an energy that can be um, about disruptions, right? So the full moon energy, having, a, having a, a lunar eclipse that makes you feel wobbly and maybe not quite functioning so well and also makes you a bit sluggish, right? Um, then with, with, it moving to, um, with the moon moving toward Mars <coughs> means that this feeling of discontent will actually continue. Now, there's always a silver lining, and here's the silver lining. The full moon will be happening on November the 8th, and on November the 9th, the moon reaches the Pleiadians, and the brightest star called Aldebaran.
because Aldebaran is the brightest star in the constellation of Taurus and the full moon is in Taurus. Now Taurus by default, the depiction is a bull. And so this isn't about being the bull in the china shop. This isn't about, this is more about the need to have your territory safe. Right? So just make sure while you're going through this sluggishness not to add on more problems. This is not the time to be the kindest person and listen to everybody else's problems because that's just not feasible because you will have problems um, recovering from taking on too much that isn't really yours. But because on the 9th of November... We're reaching the brightest star in the constellation of Taurus, which means because it's the brightest star and we have a full moon, again, the energy of Taurus, which is also a fighter in energy, um, will be highlighted. Now, Taurians are pretty much interested in, in, um, in family and in unity and in making sure that whatever your unit is, is sort of working, right? Just remember you can't rush anything. That's really, really important. And you can't... Sorry. <laughs> Switched itself off. <laughs> so, anyway, I was just saying you can't you can't rush anything and you can't force anything. But Taurus is really, really interested in um, in having their, their families, their units safe and sound. And because we are on the 9th of November, just the day after the full moon, we're reaching the Pleiadians. Now, I said that so many times here on my channel, um, the Pleiadians is where we are from, right? So, with all the turmoil that the lunar eclipse will bring to you, with this feeling of discontent, uh, am I going the right direction, you know, even you might actually ask yourself, am I a good question? Because there is insecurity in Taurus, it's just not visible, because Taurus is depicted by the bull, and so you rather show off, oftentimes, um, or pretend you're actually all right when you're not, so that is another Taurus trait, it is not necessarily the greatest trait, but it's a trait, you know, <clears throat> and you have to force yourself, to be honest, to yourself and feel what you what you truly feel. But on the 9th of November, we're going home, which means we get a bit of a respite or respite with regards to then moving forward to Mars. So the point I'm making is you can feel the full moon energy normally two days before and then a couple of days after. And because we're moving so fast from the full moon to Mars, which means things stay fiery, things Things stay, but they're not, energetically speaking, they're not staying necessarily um, aggressive. This is not the way that it feels. It just feels like there are maybe friction, there is maybe friction, but it's more on an emotional level. It's, you know, people saying something, you can't brush it off, um, you know, that, that sort of stuff. So it doesn't have to be conflict. There just has to be you understanding, you know, that when people um, have um, the wrong words for you, right? Normally, you would take them on and tell them off. And the advice is, hey, sweetie, hey, sweetie. the advice is, because of the energy of the, the lunar uh, eclipse and then um, going towards Taurus, is to not do that. Let it go. Be the, be the stronger person. Be the better person here, right? And um, just don't give a shit what they say because at the end of the day it is just opinions anyway guys that was sort of short and sweet there's not all too much to say all i'm saying is um, all i want you to know is is that the solar eclipse while it is not as intense as the lunar eclipse has already happened in over in october so um you know you don't have to worry about uh anger issues and all these kind of things this is more a time where you feel maybe a bit left out and maybe a bit less exp less appreciated and because it all comes out in a wash because we're moving towards mass um just acknowledge your feeling but please don't go into arguing because it goes nowhere right everybody has an opinion and that's all it really is okie dokie that's all we got time for thank you so much bye bye